Today we're building a super clean custom PC to test out a new coolant named GoChiller by a company called Flexigraph. This coolant is actually black and they claim that it is the best commercially available coolant for your PC. So naturally we had to build a crazy custom PC to put this coolant to the test against some of the industry's best. Flexigraph are also going to be giving away eight bottles of this coolant to our audience. So pay attention throughout the video on how to enter. Flexigraph have also given our audience a 20% discount code. If you love the performance or the unique black color, then feel free to check out the links in the video description and use code GCIFR20 for 20% off. I'll leave those links in the video description. Enjoy the video.
Here we go. Time to test how the GoChiller coolant performs. To start with, we have a controlled 20 degrees ambient temperature. I want to test each coolant in a couple of gaming benchmarks, but I think our 30 minute Fermax stress test will be the more reliable results. Each test will be ran a minimum of three times each just to confirm our results. Let's start off with regular distilled water. Flexigraph claims that GoChiller liquid is low foam and reduces the formation of bubbles. I've had this distilled water in the system for two days and we can still see the presence of micro bubbles, which is usually the case for most transparent liquids. Distilled water does not contain corrosion inhibitors or biocides to prevent corrosion or growth. You still need these inhibitors because distilled water does become conductive over time. As you can see, our water temperature starts at 20 degrees Celsius across the GPU and in the reservoir. After a 30 minute burn-in test, the water temperature shot up to 40 to 41 degrees across the GPU and 44 degrees inside the reservoir. Our Fermax stress test saw the distilled water peak at 58 degrees Celsius at the 30 minute mark, and we ran this test three times and had the exact same results. We also observed the GPU temperature in both Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Red Dead Redemption 2 benchmarks. Our second liquid is from EK Waterblocks. It is the EK Waterblocks Cryofuel Blue Premix, which is a pastel with all corrosion inhibitors and biocides. I'm extremely curious to see how this one performs against the GoChiller coolant. Filling the loop, we can see a small amount of foam developing in the reservoir. The micro bubbles do not seem to be there like we witnessed with the distilled water. However, we can see small amounts of foam around the corners of the tube bends. These eventually made their way out over time. Again, our coolant temperature started at around that 20 to 21 degree mark, and after a 30 30 minute burn in tests reached 30 to 39 degrees on the GPU and 43 degrees in the reservoir. This was a 1 to 2 degree improvement over the distilled water. Our Fermax stress test saw the EK coolant peak at 56 degrees Celsius at the 30 minute mark, which was a 2 degree improvement over the distilled water. We also observed the GPU temperature in both Shadow of the Tomb Radar benchmark and Red Dead Redemption 2 benchmark, which was pretty much identical to the distilled water. Our third liquid is from Corsair. It is their XL5 Clear Premix, which contains all of their corrosion inhibitors and biocides. I was expecting to see similar results to the distilled water when filling the Corsair loop. As expected, the Corsair loop did not foam, however, it had so much more micro bubbles than the distilled water. Those micro bubbles did not disappear throughout the whole test either. However, I'm sure after a few days, they would disappear. The Corsair Clear Liquid started at 21 degrees, and after a 30 minute burn-in test, reached 38 to 39 degrees on the GPU, and 42 degrees in the reservoir, beating out the EK liquid by half a degree to one degree. After 30 minutes of Fermark stress tests, the GPU ended at 56 degrees, which is the same as the EK liquid, However, I believe that the Corsair liquid was at the low 56 degrees, wherever the EK was at the high 56. Now we'll visit this later on in the video. Again, we tested the coolant in Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Red Dead Redemption 2 benchmarks, and we got identical results. Our last liquid is the GoChiller coolant. This liquid also has all corrosion inhibitors and biocides to prevent growth. Filling the loop, I observed no micro bubbles. However, the coolant did foam up a tiny bit in the reservoir, just like the EK coolant did. It did not take long for the foam to disappear and there was no foam elsewhere in the loop, unlike how we observed EK's coolant around the tube bends. GoChiller claims that the thermal conductivity of the GoChiller coolant is the highest for commercially available coolant due to the nanomaterial additives. So, let's see how it performed. Our coolant started off at 19 to 20 degrees, observed across the GPU and the reservoir. After a 30 minute burn-in test, we observed 38 to 39 degrees across the GPU and 41 degrees in the reservoir. This puts GoChiller ahead of the pack by about half a degree to one degree over the Corsair Clear Premix. Our 30 minute Fermax stress test was also another win for the GoChiller coolant. After 30 minutes, we saw our GPU hit 55 degrees. We did get a random spike, which pushed it to 56 degrees. However, this was only for a split second and for the most part it was tossing between that 54 to 55 degree mark for a good portion of the later run. Again we ran some gaming benchmarks with Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Red Dead Redemption 2 and saw identical results. The identical results we saw in our gaming benchmarks were pretty much expected. These benchmarks only run for about three minutes, so there's not a lot of time for radiator heat soak to occur. Our Fermax stress test was a great way to test each coolant's thermal conductivity. This time allowed for the loop to saturate and reach an equilibrium. 
I think that if we ran this test for one hour, the results could have separated even more, even though we were kind of at that flat line. I wanted to show you guys the line graphs side by side as the coolant heats up over time. This should show you how well each coolant is thermally conductive and taking away the heat from the GPU. So there you have it. You can get better cooling performance out of your system just by swapping the liquid. One thing we didn't get to test because it requires a lot of time is if the coolant stains your loop. We'd definitely love to revisit this in the future. GoChiller states that many liquids are brightly colored and over time these dyes break down and stain your loop. They also state that the coloring of GoChiller comes from nanoparticles. Now these nanoparticles are used to boost the thermal performance and they're black in color. There is no additional dye in the liquid. These particles can be considered to be pigment-like, hence the color won't fade over time when exposed to light and air, just like your regular coolants would. The intense blackness comes from the chemical nature of the particles. They also state that this is a potential weakness of their product, however I see it as a positive because no one else out there offers a black liquid that is not dye based. In fact, I know of many companies who have released a black dyed liquid, but unfortunately it seems to stain the loop a lot more than what your normal colors would. Hence why you don't really find much black liquid on the market anymore. Again, we have a 20% discount code GCIFR20. If you want to use that, links will be in the video description. And if you want a chance of winning a bottle of GoChilla, we have a Gleam link in the video description below. If there's any parts of the build you want to check out further, I'll leave all of those links in the video description. And if you want to support the channel, Patreon or YouTube channel memberships is the way to do that. Again, we appreciate all your support. Thanks for watching and we'll see you all in the next one.